Good afternoon, everybody. This is Andres once again with another Ravenloft recap. Um, I have been away for a long time, but for now I, I am back. It's just I've been on a hiatus. I took it myself, and I may continue being on a hiatus. Things are fine on my end, so nothing to worry about there. But as I said before, I'm gonna be doing the indie recaps instead instead of uh, recording the sessions. I feel it's less awkward that way, and I can at least give you a good summary of what's happened. Today we're gonna cover sessions seven, eight, and nine. Yeah, it's been that long since the last video, and I want to get started on it now before we can before uh. Before I wait any longer, so um, <clears throat> so on our last session, the party has met Rahadin, Strahd's right hand man, and they found the holy symbol of Ravenkind. As you may know, that that's power can uh, is going to be useful when the party f fights Strahd because they are fated to fight Strahd at some point. It's just a matter of when. But uh, the seventh session the seventh session begins when Rhett has an epiphany. The Bistani are wanderers, and they are currently resting in an encampment. Madame Aba's reading said that the sword, the sun sword, will be found in a place where wanderers rest. And then he thinks, isn't the Bistani encampment not a suitable place to look for the sun sword? So. The party agrees, and they go to the encampment. But on the way, they have a run-in with one of Strahd's boys. Uh, it was a man foaming at the mouth, bearing in fangs and claws, with pale skin, and he was wearing light armor, actually, and holding a longsword. He charged at our party, no explanation whatsoever. As soon as he saw the party with 90 feet, he charges right in. He was only a, he was only one man, and he was held and he was at a disadvantage because of the you know action economy, uh, five versus one, and even then he held his own against the party. Fortunately for him, he went down in a matter of rounds. And uh, here's a little something that I didn't know. I didn't know that vampires in gaseous form can't be hit, can't take damage from anything. And and well, uh, I act, the party continued to attack him while in gaseous form. And since I didn't know that little fun fact, well, our vampire boy died. So XP for the party. Yay. But anyway, once that was done, the party proceeds to visit Madame Aba. In the Pistani encampment, Madame, Madame Aba reveals that she had the, the sun sword hidden under her table the whole time. However, she couldn't simply hand over the blade. Doing so puts her and the Pistani at risk, for the sun sword at full power is one of the few things that can take down Strahd. In order for her to hand over the blade, Madame Aba wanted to see if the party was brave enough to anger Strahd. To do so, she asks that they start by slaying the Witch of the Woods, a hag who lives in the nearby forest. For now, the party turns down Madame Aba's request. They felt they needed to grow in power first in order to face the devil with better odds. Thus, they marched to the Spalich Woods, where the werewolves were coming from. Because, as you may as you may recall, the party was brought here by a letter, by a fake letter, I may add, that was saying that werewolves were attacking Barovia. It turns out the letter was truth in that was true in that regard because there had been werewolves attacking the village, and Irina confirmed that when when she heard about it, when when she heard about the letter, so. The party decides to march down to the Valage Woods. 
where they find where they eventually come upon a lone elf who raised his bow and then he started asking an, an elven what were they doing in the forest realizing nobody was answering he decided to ask in common the party tells him what they're doing and he says werewolves there are no werewolves in this forest yeah so uh yeah the party decides to start searching for werewolves and the elven man decides to let it proceed uh that is until the party is suddenly flanked by two wolves the wolves attack by the elf's command and the fight begins it takes a little bit because the wolves turned out to be hardier than regular wolves turns out these these ones were werewolves as well simply in animal form the fight ends in the party's favor with no casualties however there the Wood Elf Ranger and Rats, the Caliban Warblade, get bitten in the process. And they didn't realize this until the full moon, full moon came. They were cursed with lycanthropy because as soon as the full moon shines down on them, they transform into wolves and scamper off into the forest. Edie and Ivan, wondering what happened, follow after their friends. But having no control over their feral forms, Thera and Rats attacked his companions. However, Edie protected himself. Uh, protect, yeah, Edie summoned a natural construct, and Ivan was able to scale a tree in mere moments. And thanks to their efforts, they were actually able to avoid certain death at the hands of their werewolf friends. Uh, in the morning, with Edie and Ivan fatigued, they watch as their friends return back to humanoid turn back to humanoid form. So they are brought to the Blood of the Divine Tavern. So they wake up. And this is what happens. I want to do a little aside right now because I want to say that my players roll the wisdom checks ahead of time. Thera beats her second wisdom check, so she has she now has uh, control of her werewolf form. However, Fred's failed all three of his, so he was doomed to become feral permanently. However, I told him, hey, so this is what happens. You hear a voice in your head who proclaims that you're doomed to submit to your bestial form eventually. But he strikes a bargain with you. Basically, uh, Bretz was allowed to keep his sanity intact in exchange for a favor in the future. Having no other choice, Bretz accepts. So, the two werewolves were able to keep their, um, were able to keep their heads in place and now have control of the form. But it does make you wonder who is this mysterious voice who asks rats, hey, I'm gonna help you stay in control, but I need you to do me a favor later on. And that, my friends, is the end of session seven and eight. Now we're gonna move on to session number nine. You say this is when our spirit shaman Kroll came back. So he returns. And finds out that the party has been hunting werewolves and comes along. Because he know, because the party knows there's more werewolves with that came from. Uh, so when they go to the forest, they find a dead body. Let's see. Nope, not that one. Excuse me for a moment. 
Oh, that's right. I think I gave it to one of the one of the guys. Hang on. Nope. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Was it? No. Negatory. Eh. Oh, was it under my DM notes? Nope. Okay. So. Ah, uh, what can I say? I didn't have the letter with me. So. Basically, what the letter said was to anybody, to any adventurers receiving this, it was basically a letter from the Burgomaster pleading with the outside world to never come in Barovia, to let them all, to let, to leave them all to their fate, to have holy priests surround Barovia with an energy field so that none may come out. Irina takes a look at the letter and confirms it is the handwriting of her father. So this letter turned out to be a true letter from the Burgomaster. One the party never was eaten. As they are thinking about what to do next, they are attacked not only by more werewolves, but a couple of vampire spawn as well. For some reason, Vampires and werewolves were working together. Initiative is rolled, and surprisingly, well, not surprisingly at this point, the party demolishes the enemies. So they continue on. They continue on with where they find a cave in the distance, and there was a werewolf sentry in hybrid. They attack the werewolf. And he soon calls for reinforcements. And uh, this is where it gets weird. Because two more werewolves arrive. And one... Uh, what can I say? Let me just describe this for you. Because... The Majestic Lycantor makes his debut in Ravenloft. It's half werewolf, half half the body of a regular wolf. I call it the Lycantor. Uh For those DMs watching at home, this is a template in 3.0 called the Tar Creature, which you basically mix a humanoid with the body of a beast. And then you finish the process from there. This monster attacked the party, but he had to jump over some other group in order to uh, be able to charge towards him. He fails the jump check, which means he falls on the other group and is unable to move, charge, and end his turn. After that, uh, the party manages to finish him off, but hoping the werewolves was yet another creature who jumps into the younger group hiding herself. Red shouts show yourself to which the nymph happily obliges to. Because of her blinding beauty those closest to her had to roll a fortitude save. Irene, Irina being in the middle of it all she was caught she was caught in the in the blind in the blinding radius and is permanently blind. After that, the party was able to mop up, and basically, that was the end of the werewolves. What they don't realize, however, was that a raven was watching in the distance, above the trees. Watching everything unfold. What happens to our intrep intrepid party in that session? Well, stay tuned.
y'all have a nice day